Hello everybody, welcome back or welcome to another episode. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Evan and today we are talking all about the Mizuno Wave Rebellion. been able to take the Wave Rebellion out on a handful of runs and really try to figure out what it is best suited for. I am very, very excited about the Wave Rebellion from Mizuno. It is my first time in a Mizuno shoe and I had to do a little digging. It looks like Mizuno has been around for quite some time. That makes a lot of sense to me. When I was thinking about the shoe and comparing it to some other things I've been running in, it really did fall quite in line with like an ASICS for me. A very, very high build quality, really kind of let me understand a little bit about the shoe. A steeped in tradition, a way and a vision of how they see running and running shoes and how it should be designed. So before I get too far into this, let me give you some quick specs and then I'll give you my thoughts on the Wave Rebellion. So this is coming in on a men's size nine. The weight comes in at 8.1 ounces, 38 millimeters in the heel and 30 in the forefoot giving the Wave Rebellion an overall drop of eight millimeters. We have an engineered mesh upper with a traditional uh, structure and fit. The midsole is Mizuno's Energy Light Foam, which is their lightest foam to date. And also in here you will see a plate. This is a like a fiberglass kind of plastic nylon, I guess you would call it, plate. And they are calling that the Mizuno Wave. So this is something that they have in most of their shoes, but I think this one is designed just a little bit different. You can see it through or the outsole here, through the bottom of the shoe. And it forks. You can see here uh, where this tread pattern differs a little bit. That is pretty much what is going to follow the plate. It has a nice fork in it like that. It will run all the way through the back of the shoe. The outsole is what they're calling a G3 rubber. It is a full coverage with this cutout here and I'm really liking it. I think for the purpose of this shoe, it is going to serve quite well. For the ride of the shoe, it is very light underfoot. Even coming in that 8.1, I honestly thought it was going to be lighter. I didn't look at that until after I had a handful of runs in it and I did expect it to be a little lighter. So that's actually a good thing. It feels light on foot compared to maybe what the weight actually could be. It has very good energy return with this foam and the addition of the, the Mizuno Wave plate. It also is a bouncy ride and has really good pop to, from each toe off with the addition of that plate. The price this is kind of where I'm not a huge fan. It is coming in at $180. That's quite high. We'll start out at the top. We did kind of talk about the engineered mesh upper. The tongue is very thin and breathable. And then I do not understand the uh, struck, <laughs> why this is designed quite the way it is. This is a humongous tongue. It reminds me of a soccer cleat. You know how you would tie the laces and then fold that piece over to kind of protect, to cover the laces for, you know, kicking the soccer ball or, or football, wherever you're from. So that's what it reminds me of. It's quite strange and does need a redesign in my opinion. So that's just my thoughts. The, the laces are fine. They're very thin, a little stretchy. I think they could be improved a little bit there. Nothing major on that. The heel structure is good. It is quite a substantial heel structure. The collar of the shoe is really nice. Uh, very good padding there. I enjoyed it. I think for what this shoe is getting into, I think it, it serves its purpose there. I do like the, the, the amount of stack height and the foam that they're using is very nice, very comfortable. I did go true to size. It does run just a touch narrow, but I think like an Asics, I think it's gonna be, it's a, a little on the narrow side, but um, not overly so. The outsole is going to really, really last. It's, it's a a good amount of rubber. It's kind of a lot of these, you can kind of see there, if that's gonna pick it up. It has a, a nice amount of traction with the nice kind of nubs or ridges, I guess, if you will. And then that cutout is gonna reduce some weight, but there's not really a lot of drawbacks. I think the shoe is fantastic. 
One of the things that I found when I was running in the shoe is it really is a lively, lively ride. It encourages you to run a little bit faster, but not overly so where it's, you know how some of the shoes are that are designed with speed in mind are a little uncomfortable or a little unforgiving when the pace drops off or you're running easy, you're in between intervals, or you wanna take it out on a long or easier run. This one didn't penalize you for running easier. So that's why I think I can understand the price now that I have a few runs in it. I did get a handful of paces in the shoe. The first one was about eight miles and it really ended up being some, I, I did a negative split on that. With the, the second four miles, I really was kind of pushing the shoe to see what it was capable of. And it just felt really good. It felt good running miles. And then another run I did, six or seven, eight miles, the pace was nice and easy. Really chill, relaxed run, ran with the family, pushed the stroller, and it was fine. It did not bother me. It didn't give any hot spots. It wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't stiff. The foam really kind of allowed me to just have an enjoyable, easy run. I used it as a warm-up, cool-down shoe for a very specific hard workout where I really wanted that carbon lightweight uh, shoe for the actual workout. I probably could have got away with the shoe on the workout, but I really wanted to get something at eight, eight ounces. I was very happy to drop into something in the very low sevens, upper sixes in weight for that workout. And then just a nice, easy, normal, just what I called my classic five miler today. So just a very good shoe to run in regardless of the pace. So that is where I see this shoe shining. If you want to get one shoe to cover all of your runs, maybe you want to race shoe. Honestly, you could race in that shoe. If you want one shoe to cover everything, this one will do it. Without hesitation, I would recommend this shoe with the one drawback of the $180. But knowing that it's gonna cover quite so much, that tread life is, and that wear is really going to hold up. I feel like that foam is going to be substantial and not break down very easily. And I think that rubber is going to really last and really hold up over all the miles. I was kind of thinking about that on this run of, you know, what's the average? I think everyone's weekly volume, weekly mileage is a little bit different, but anywhere from that, you know, that 30 to 80, you know, less than more on both ends of that. But maybe if we just say 50 miles a week, and that might be high for some, I don't, I'm not sure where everyone falls. Actually, uh, drop me a, a comment down below. I would be very curious on what your average weekly mileage is. So I, I, I'd love to hear that. So with that in mind, if we just say 50 is just a good average number, this is gonna last easily an entire training block if you do all of your training in that and it's still gonna be able to do the race. So if you had two, say you had this shoe plus the, the race day shoe and maybe you did a, a few key workouts in that shoe, that's easily gonna last a good amount of time and you're able to pinch pennies a little bit there because this is expensive and obviously a race shoe is going to also be on the expensive side, but you know, it's, it's easier than maybe putting together four or five different shoes in a running shoe rotation. That's how I see the shoe being best used. I was really trying to come up with best case scenario for the shoe. It's an awesome long day run shoe. It's an awesome just, everyday trainer it it can go easy if you really you'd have to really pay attention to yourself and check in to make sure you're not overdoing it on those easy days this is going to be a classic everyday daily trainer long runs for sure interval work you could easily do i, I really see this shoe covering quite a lot of things and doing it actually quite well it could be a little lighter again i'm not going to fault it for that because it's coming in to do so many things you know, it has the structure in there, it has the plate, it has the high stack. I'm not going to fault it for that. And with the tradition that I've read and seen from Mizuno, it does make a lot of sense. They are steeped in heritage, just like an Asics. The build quality is gonna be phenomenal again. So I do feel like the 180 is okay. I would love to see it. $150 I think is a much better place for this shoe but it's going to be okay. Please, 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 Mizuno, revisit this tongue. Actually do the whole thing. It is semi-gusseted, I forgot to mention that. So that's that's a plus, I like that. I think the, the lightweight meshness of the main portion of the tongue is good, but revisit this top portion. It's thick, it doesn't lay well over the foot, it's way too high. So I was able to, with, 
with some real intention and on purpose, get this to lay okay, kind of like set it just right, tie the laces down over the top of it, that way I didn't get a lot of movement from it. And it was fine, it did not bother me on any run. I had zero issues from the tongue, the, the collar, the heel counter, anything. So excellent shoe, a couple drawbacks, one in design and the other price, come on, that's, you know, $180 for a daily trainer is quite a lot of money. So other than that, I was very happy with the shoe. I'm excited to continue running in it, put the miles in it. I will definitely check back in when the miles get closer to, I don't know what a good number is, 50, 100, what do you guys like? Do you think 50 is too soon for another check-in? Do you think 100 is a better mark to get there? Again, 100 takes me a lot longer to actually get that mileage in. So I don't know. I'd love to hear from you on what your thoughts are on kind of how you'd like to see that structured and just going forward uh, with the channel and future videos. So thank you so much for staying tuned in all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate that. And I'd love to hear back from you on what your thoughts are on the Mizuno Wave Rebellion. If you like this video and this kind of content, go ahead and click that like button, the subscribe button if you're not already yet subscribed, and that bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. As always, go forward in power, love, and a sound mind, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.